Hello, I'm the Guitar Geek, and this week on Geeking Out With, I'm with Cole Coleman, musician and inventor of the thimble slide from LA in the USA. Hello, Cole. Hey, hello, Andrew, Guitar uh, Geek. Hello, yeah, that's my real name. We don't use that very often. Wow. Um, <laughs> behind the scenes. Thank you so much for, for talking to me on this. We, we kind of didn't meet at the Music Messe in Germany uh, recently. But we, right, right. I crossed your 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 path many many times, and I never managed to find a time because you were so so busy with the thimble slide. But 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 you made a presence, that's for sure. As you were coming by, I was like, yes, this guy looks interesting, <laughs> and he's trying to get up here. But uh, but then then he had to go. So yeah, I, I tried many times and and just didn't make it because you were busy. But you were busy with the thimble slide. Tell us about the thimble slide, please, Cole. Sure. Well, um, the thimble slide. Um, let me just show everybody real quick what it is mm. as we're talking. So if you can see this, guys, it's this is my creation, the thimble slide. This is the Maxim model. That There are other ones. We, we can talk about that. But this is the Maxim, mm -hmm. and we'll show that in more detail uh, in a minute. Uh, but what it is, I consider it a mini guitar slide. And so it's designed to be worn on the tip of your finger up here in the uh, – just at, like at the base of the fingernail area. And when you wear it here, it's on the fingertip area, uh, it'll still allow your knuckle to bend, and it's cut on an angle in the front, which allows your fingertip to poke through enough to be able to press the strings. Mm -hmm. And the, the angle helps keep the slide off the strings when you're, when you're fretting. So in this way, uh, you can actually still play the guitar, you can actually still fret the instrument, go for a slide, and then go right back to, to playing. So you can actually put it on at, at the beginning of a song, Go, you know, do your big slide solo or, or parts, and you don't have to take it off. You can still keep it on and play through the song. And you can also then get creative with it as well. You can mix runs and sliding, that type of thing. So that, that's what the thimble slide is. And like I say, this is, this is the maxim. Mm -hmm. it's, the, um, it's, the, it's the thimble slide in the simplest form because I, uh, I had to seek out mass production. Okay. So this one, only the Maxim slide is actually mass produced at this time. I have some other ones that are more decorative. They're kind of cool looking. They got Fleur de Lis on them, and I'm working on I've one with like I've seen the Fleur de Lis one. It looks, it looks lovely. Yeah, but I, I haven't been able to figure out a way to mass produce that yet. Okay. But we're working on it. Mm -hmm. And you were, you were in Germany at the Music Messe, as, as was I. And yeah. how was the Music Messe for you? Well, it was fantastic to be there because here in Los Angeles, we have the NAMM show. Mm -hmm. You know, this just just down the road in Anaheim, and most of my life as a musician, I've always heard about oh, the yeah, Nam show is great, but music mess is so much bigger and so much cooler, and so it was very exciting to be able to get to go, and um, uh, I was not disappointed at all. Music mess was cool; it's in a great environment. I did hear that currently it's been getting smaller each year, a little bit smaller, um, but it was great to be there. It really is just like Nam show; it's the same thing, mm -hmm. slightly different environment. And, and yeah, I had the same type of reactions at Music Mesa that I've been having here in the States uh, to the slide, which has been great. It's been like people come by and they look at it, they're kind of like curious, and then you see that light bulb moment, like, ah, oh, I get it, oh, this is great, you know, I gotta have it. And uh, that's good. It's still very new. I, I've been working on the Thimble Slide for many years, mm -hmm. you know, developing it, doing prototypes, and even selling it. I, I used to make it by hand, and, and okay, was selling wow. them for about... Yeah, yeah, I used to make, I used to uh, sell it for about two or three years, making them by hand, until I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, I got to find a way to to, uh, to to mass produce. So we just solved that this last September. So Fantastic. that's how new it is. It's only really been the last six months that I've really been been making a push to get it out in, into the public. Oh, congratulations on, on making that that next step in the business. That's that's, that's yeah, a you, big one. You'd never you'd never guess how hard it is. <laughs> I, I don't even <laughs> like, want to you know, try. Solving, solving mass production, I, I thought. I thought it, that it would be a lot easier than this, you know, you know, go see a few professional companies to describe you know, but no, it's, it's amazing how tough it was to get it done. Well, what's, um, what's it made of? Oh, uh, well, the, currently the thimble slide is made of brass mm -hmm. and that's a conscious choice because one of the features of the thimble slide is that it's size adjustable. It, it comes in four different sizes initially, small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, the slide surface is always one inch, but it's the diameters that, that change you know, to, right. to accommodate larger or smaller fingers. But there's a sizing gap, if you can see it, mm -hmm. right down the, the top of it, there's a gap. That's the sizing gap. And when you, when you take it out of the box, if it's a little too big in your size, you can take pliers, which you wrap up and tape to protect it. Uh, you can take pliers and squeeze it to mm -hmm. make it a little smaller. 
Uh, or um, you can take a screwdriver. Again, you wrap the tip up in tape to protect the slide, and you put that um, into the gap and give it a good turn, and that'll force the slide open a bit to relax the fit. So you can you can fine tune it to fit your mm -hmm. finger. So that the brass makes it still slightly malleable. And, and exactly, it's got it's got to got to be brass at this point for that for that purpose. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I did make a few out of steel um, mm -hmm. for an experiment. Yeah, you can't you can't budge steel. <laughs> <laughs> and glass, I didn't, I didn't want to go there. I knew that was going to snap. So that's that's a yeah. world of trouble. That is, yeah. Um, so, but it works great, and I, I happen to like the the sound of the brass. I, I've I've compared slide sounds, and personally, I do prefer brass. So it just kind of works out well for me. Well, I'm, uh, we've spoken before about me trying one out for the channel, and I'm I'm very excited because I am not a slide player. I may want to be a slide player. But I've never found my in, you know, from from being a non-slide player with with all the fingers available. Whenever yeah. I, I throw a slide on, I just I feel um, disabled. I feel yeah. less exactly. Of, I feel less of a musician rather than than more of one. Um, so I'm very excited to try the thimble slide because it, it seems like it's kind of solved the problem for people like me. It, it's a very good solution. There, you know, there are several people out there over the years that have tried different solutions, but I think this is the simplest and an easiest one. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I say, it's just it's just a mini slide, but it's it just fits right there in the, on the tip of your finger. No moving parts. It's easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. One other thing about it, uh, I designed it with a lar It's larger in the back, the diameter, larger mm -hmm. in the back and smaller in the front, so that it sheathes the fingertip. You know, like it fits the. Okay. The, the angle of the, of the fingertip, so it's not loose and rattling around. It, it fits on, and it, you know that that's what allows you to be able to play really close to your fingers. You can that allows you to still fret really close or make tight chords. If it was like a regular slide, it's just too too bulky at the tip. Yeah. So I just want to mention that too. It's it's uh, it's a kind of a conical, conical shape. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, you mentioned you mentioned the the old slide. I mean, it's necessity is the mother of invention. You yeah, know, so, so that, tell that, me, you you invented it. How and and why? I suppose is the is the the real question. Well, that that's it. You said it exactly. It's like oh, okay. uh, I, this is yeah. This is an idea that I had since I was around eighteen years old, and playing in bars and for the first time, clubs and bars. And back then, um, you know, you go to a local store and ask for a slide, and you're almost always shown just a, a brass tube or a glass tube. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a brass slide and I'm on stage at the local you know, bar down here and we're playing a particular song that has a lot of slide in it. So I throw that slide on and my thoughts were exactly like yours. It's like, oh my God, this is like, you know, clumsy and bulky and my, my finger's disabled. And in a couple of bars, I'm going to have to go from where I am right now to get back to a D chord, which yeah. I can't do now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so almost, almost instantaneously, I was like, there's got to be a better way. And I don't need this big a slide on my finger. I just need a little one. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I just kept looking. I, I, I figured somebody would do it. You know, someone else is going to do it, some big company. And over the years, I would, as I was playing the American Southwest, uh, going around to towns, I'd go into music stores and ask. I'd say, hey, you got any small slides or anything like that? And they all looked at me like, no, you, I never heard of that. And after 20 years, I figured, you know, Maybe I better try this. Yeah, maybe I better, you know, actually, you know, do it and see if I can do it. So, what, what, so the first. Sorry, carry on. Yeah. No, so the, well, the first thing I did was I took a big silver biker ring. Okay. You know, the really, I've, if you ever seen biker rings? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, there's... Some of them are very, very large. You know, so I took a very large, you know, biker ring, and I cut it down to um, the, the original prototype was three quarters of an inch, and and it, and it worked perfectly. It just like first try, it was like, this is great. It works perfectly. And then through some experimentation and showing other guitar players, uh, we determined that three quarters of an inch was maybe a little too small for, for most people. Mm -hmm. So like, it worked great for me, but you had to be really careful. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a dark stage and flashing lights, it might, you know, you can, you can easily slip off. So that's why we arrived at one inch, one inch long. Okay. Fantastic. So, how did you go from like having the idea and the, having the necessity be there to making a few to selling a few? Because there's you know there's a difference between making them and then, then actually selling them, and then yeah. getting to where you are now. What what was that big? Was it friends or or fellow musicians or? 
it was pretty much it was it was fellow musicians. Uh, I was I was doing um, a lot of recording at the time um, for people here in L.A. And for whatever reason, I was recording for two different two different artists mm -hmm. who both wanted these big melodic slide solos. And I was in the studio um, recording uh, the, the part, and the producer at the time uh, said, "Wow, that's great!" And you know, we're going to do this live. So, how do you plan to do it live? Or do we have to get another guitar player? You know, and that that brought up like that, like I say, that background memory. Mm -hmm. And that that was the moment when I decided I've got to do this. You know, I've got to like make this happen. So that that's when I first crafted the uh, the prototype, and then. You know, once the prototype was working, uh, I did a search on the web to see if there was anything else like it. And at that time, there wasn't. There was nothing was coming up at all. So I was very excited, very cool. Mm -hmm. This is like an original idea. So the very first step, the first thing I did was uh, take it to a foundry uh, where they work with metals and all that, you know, explained to him what I was trying to do. And he pointed me in the direction of a 3D artist. So the first true thimble slide was done with the help of a 3D artist, you know, CAD CAM. Mm -hmm. So we had to make a master and then a mold and then start, start making it that way. And in the beginning, it was just one, one size, size medium. And I, that, that's when I started showing it around to my guitar player friends and uh, testing it out. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was a bit of a creation process. And uh, uh, so that, that's, how, that's how that started. Now, to, to selling it, I knew I, I knew I really couldn't sell it until I solved the size problem. So nice. that was actually a whole other, a whole other problem, which took at least three months to kind of figure out, you know, how am I going to solve four different sizes? And I, I, at first, I thought I was going to have to do like, you know, I'm going to have to make like ten or eighty, uh, 10, ten to fifteen of these things to, to do the different sizes. And in fact, I actually did a, what I call a sizing survey. Uh, I went up to MI in Hollywood. You know, a, a musicians institute mm -hmm. in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and I actually started going around saying, "Hey, hey, I'm you know working on this thing. I, I'm checking out the size of guitar players' fingers." Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I usually was was met with a raised eyebrow, like, "Yeah, what the hell is this guy doing?" You know. <laughs> but they were very, actually, very helpful. You know, so like pretty quick, everybody was very like, "Yeah, yeah sure. Here's my hand. Here, what you need to do." You know, and and I was amazed at the different sizes of fingers. It's 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 amazing how. How many sizes there there are? So, but through the sizing gap, I was able to get it down to just four sizes. And has it so. has it always had the sizing gap, or was it originally a one one piece? Well, well, originally it was one piece. Okay. Until I, until I realized I've got to come up with different sizes. Because I, I was um, I was skept I'm, I'm always skeptical because this is what I do. I can't just like things. You know, I have to really get in there and, and question them. And I was skeptical about the sizes because you have four sizes. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Small, um, medium. So large, when I saw extra. you at Frankfurt, because I, I always have a trouble. I've got large hands um, and, and thick fingers, and nothing ever fits me. You know, I can't buy things in shops and stuff. And then uh -huh. I have to get those. I've tried the big slides, the big just tubes, and they just, they're too big. So I thought, this can't be, you know, you can't have got enough sizes. But it, it seems like you've actually done the research and, and been there, done that. Yeah, it, it, it's it's worked out amazingly well, and I have to say, during a lot of this process, um, you know, a lot of a lot of thought has gone into it, a lot of testing, but but also there's a certain amount of luck, you know, and it really is. It's just like, hey, it works. This is great. Um, but with the sizing stuff, that was a process, and and a lot of research went into doing that, and I pretty well solved it. You know, I there's there's only a few people I've ever met whose fingers are so large that it was difficult, but but we even got that to work because because the sizing gap really does open up hmm. quite wide if you really need it to, and and you can really open it up very wide. So I've I've been able to fit everybody so far. I saw you yeah, the, the Nessa. I've got I've got a video which I'll I'll put in here somewhere, and you have like a a thing that you were pushing it onto and sort of molding it around, and and you were like a machine, you know, these these people yeah. people around <laughs> you and these guys like, what is this thing? What's this? This this looks cool.
that's a jeweler's mandrel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, I almost I almost brought it up here to, to show you. But yeah, it's a, it's a long, you know, it's a long t- uh, tube. It's conical in shape. You know, it's, I think it's made of steel. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, people usually get very worried when I pull that out. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, watch out. He's got his probe. Uh, <laughs> well, let's say... So uh, the thing that interests me, and I think something I have to try for myself, is the learning curve. Um, so if you've gone to friends, get, uh, having played in the places that you've mentioned so far, you've been playing around musicians that are at quite a, a good to high level, I guess. Um, what about the people who are not so um, professional, should we say? What's the, what's the learning curve like? Yeah, there, there's there's not a lot of learning curve, but but yeah, I mean, with um, with more in, intermediate players or even beginning players, the uh, you know quote learning curve is a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, most people are able to actually use it pretty well within the first five or ten minutes. You know, like mm-hmm. they're putting it on their finger and they're thinking. The very first thing is that people say, "Well, it feels kind of weird," or you know, it's a it's, diff- it's a different sensation on your finger. Yeah. But but that goes away very quickly. And um, then it's just a matter of of playing slide. So so if you if you've never played slide before, then you also have that you know that learning curve you know goes is added on. Um, but but really pretty much guaranteed you'll do a lot better with the thimble slide than you will a regular a regular slide. So like if you if you've never played slide before, then go thimble slide first. Yeah. And it's just it's just a much easier. Venture and, I, and I've had people. I've had people who have never played slide before email me saying, "This is great." You know, this this uh, I popped it on, and within you know a half hour or so, I was I was working with it. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's it's sort of like you don't have anything previous to compare it to. So if you've never played slide before and you want to or you need to, then go thimble slide first, and I think it's an easier easier process. Well, I'm I'm further so, behind. I've tried and and failed in inverted commas because it makes me less creative and. Um, I think it sounds like something I just want to throw on my finger and occasionally throw into a couple of licks just to, just to try and see what it feels like. And, and, and yeah, well I, well, I think you'll be relieved. For people like you're very much like me. You know, I, I was not a, not a pro slide player. It wasn't wasn't my my thing. I was just a rock player in a band, and was, who was called upon to play some slide here and there. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so for me, it was it's more relief. So for for people like you or me, it's it's like an aha moment. It's like ah, this is a relief, so much better. I'm going to be able to to actually use this thing. Yeah, you know. Uh, so the learning curve is pretty small, pretty short, and and with really advanced players, it seems to be almost nothing at all. Like okay. uh, I don't know if, if you saw it, but at um, uh, at, at Music Mesa, um, we had um, Joe Berger come by. He's I knew a, that's who you're going to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very famous, very famous uh, session type guy and teacher, yeah. and and also Thomas Blug. Yeah, right. And both of those guys, you know, put the thimble slide on, and within seconds, they're like just you know jamming riffs with it. It's amazing. So like like myself, the very first thimble slide prototype, you know, it took me five or ten minutes. You know, I, I put it on my finger and was kind of like, hmm, this feels kind of funny, but yeah, I see how it's going to work. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, those guys just slapped it on and off they went. Awesome. <laughs> so that was that was good to see. It's very good to see great players just pop it on and and, and go with it. You know, Th- Thomas Blug was jamming with it, and after a few minutes, he turned over to me and goes, "I got to have this thing." <laughs> well, so you, that's that's good. There you go. There's there's the uh, the testimonial you need. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Which, by the way. Uh, it, it has been a little tough to contact celebs. It's, they don't make it real easy to get a hold of the celebs. No, um, I can imagine. Yeah, um, yeah. so I've, I've tried to get a hold of some celebs for uh, artist endorsements, and yeah. I do have a handful, a uh, handful of people who are pretty famous out there, and I'm, I'm adding them into the website now, including you know uh, uh, Thomas uh, Blug and Joe Berger. Uh, but there's other people I've been talking to who um, haven't come online yet, like uh, we've been talking to Phil X, Really? Uh, yeah, a friend of mine uh, who's handling that, and uh, and and some other people too. And he's playing with Bon Jovi right now. Is that correct? Yeah, currently. Yeah, I believe he's currently with with Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah that's that's big. Uh, yeah, well, it would be really terrific to see it used in the Bon Jovi music because there's some very important slide stuff happening yeah. there. So that would be that would be really cool. You know, that's great. I mean, so that's, that's going to open all kinds of all kinds of doors. Yeah, I hope so. I, for for a few years now, I've watched uh, Richie Sambora. 
on on televised shows, you know, still using the big clumsy slide. And I'm like, you know, Rich, you got to get my slide. How do I get it to you? You know, <laughs> that's what Twitter's for, and you just keep keep pressing the buttons on Twitter and. and yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we talk about pricing? Because um, again. Yeah. Uh, I tend to be quite enthusiastic about this stuff, so I have to then sort of reel myself back in. I thought, okay, this product looks really interesting and solves a lot of problems, I would say, for people like me. I was expected to be very expensive, but I've built it up now. Tell us how much it costs, Cole. Sure. Uh, well, it, it, in the States, uh, it's the retail on it is twenty two ninety nine. That That's um, the minimum advertised price. Of course, stores can you know adjust that in store mm -hmm. if they wish. And um, in uh, in euros, it's basically like 19.99 euro, like in that that zone. And uh, the the way the way that I figured it is these days, what I call a dumb slide, is <laughs> around ten dollars. You know, it's yeah. a ten or twelve dollar, right? Yeah. Whereas the thimble slide is a smart slide. Yeah. It's a smart slide. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a progressive slide. And so what you're what you're paying for is really the ability that it gives you. You know. Yeah. So, but it, but it's not it's not cheap to produce. You know, I, I've looked into producing the regular slides, and they they really are just a piece of tubing that that is cut and polished, and it's it's you know, they're pretty cheap to produce. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thimble slide is uh, a lot more engineering goes into it. You know, they they cut patterns. It's put into a special machine to shape it and mold it. Uh, so it's it costs uh, you know a lot more to make than yeah. than a regular regular slide. And uh, going through the mass production. It's the uh, you got you got me you got the distributor. Oftentimes there's a second distributor and then finally a retailer, you know. And the retailers always want the lion's share. Of course. So yeah, it's like whatever whatever the store cost is, they like to double it. Right. So it's well, pretty that's, tough. It's, it, that's it, kind of what I was expecting price wise. You know, the, the double of of what you're saying. Um, so how how can people obtain the uh, the thimble slide? Well, currently, and you know, perhaps always, first thing is you know, go to the website. You know, go to thimbleslide.com, and I believe at this point uh, they'll always be able to buy it directly. I mean, right now you definitely can buy direct, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we ship anywhere in the world. You know, the, the shipping cost is unfortunate if you know if we're out of the country, but uh, but they, they, at least they can get their hands on it that way. Yeah. And but then uh, we are in the process of getting it out to stores so it's it's always it's a good idea to check your local store and ask if they have it i just need to point out this sounds like a sort of sponsored chat that we're doing because the show that i do on a monday it is a chat and, and the reason we're doing this chat is because i genuinely found the product to be interesting and one of those sort of products that i call um why has no one thought of that before you know so it fits in that category sort of it yeah. must exist somewhere already uh, and it seems like you've obviously been through all of that, but I just wanted to point out to the people that are watching this right now, uh, Cole and I are not in business together, and we're not. Um, <laughs> there's nothing going under the table. It's just it's an honest chat about something that I think um, is worthy of the subscribers seeing. And, and um, being a person that needs something like this, um, hopefully it'll work for me and maybe work for you as well. Well, I, I completely appreciate the opportunity to come on and and mm. and explain it and, and and i definitely understand yeah we're not it's not an infomercial that's for sure but so i so i appreciate being able to explain it all you know um just just want to point out too that that's what the uh, if they can see that that's the packaging yeah yeah so to look to look for in stores and so it's, it's usually usually hanging on the back shelf or, you know the, the back wall yeah that it looks great i mean um as we said i'm going to have one on the channel very soon to demo and um I look forward to playing some really bad slide licks, but playing them really easily. <laughs> well, I, I sincerely hope that you find the thimble slide easy to use, and I hope it works well for you. You know, that's for sure. So far, it's worked very well for virtually everyone that 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 uh, that has it, that has bought it and tried it. So, uh, but some people it works, you know, are able to use it more than others. You know, but I sincerely hope it works wonders for you. And anybody watching, same thing. Hope the thimble slide meets your your needs and works great for you. Yeah, well, that's why we're chatting, because you're a musician and you've made something that you needed for other musicians as well now. Um, I've met so many cool people doing this show, and we said this pre-chat off camera that um, everybody at the Music Mess and everybody that we, we sort of work with is genuinely very nice and very approachable and very helpful. 
and um, it's so nice to add another person yourself to that list of great people that's been on this show. So thank you so, so much. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you. I think we're going to end it there because uh, I'm just now want to get the thing on my finger and, and go and play some Bad Slide easily. <laughs> um, so, Cole, we can get you at thimbleslide.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and if uh, anybody has any questions, feel free to email. Um, you, they can go to the contact page, and they'll see, uh, you know, for information or pre-sales questions, uh, that comes to me, and customer service comes to me as well. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know, I'm pretty easily to reach uh, by by email. And if if Richie Sambo was watching this, then just send an email. Richie, you need this slide, that's for sure, and uh, <laughs> I'd love to see you using it. Okay, you can also leave comments down below this video if you want to get in, in touch with Cole or myself. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Um, any final words, Cole? I would say get yourself a thimble slide and let your creativity flow. Yeah. Free, free your fingers. Free your and, fingers. And uh, come, come up with stuff that only you can do. Okay. Cole, it's been a, a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you ever so much. Uh, I've been the Guitar Geek. This is Cole Coleman. Goodbye. Thanks, Guitar Geek.